I thought today that I would talk a little bit about the Tianguan Zifu character names and see if we can't learn some of the meanings behind them together. I will preface this by saying that I have had two years of Mandarin Chinese in college. Um, I did study traditional characters and I know that a lot of these are in simplified, so I will try my best. Let's see if my penmanship isn't too horrible and I still know what I'm talking about. Um, my mom is Japanese, so I do know a little bit of kanji. Um, typically, I use the internet. I like going on the fandom websites. On my tablet, I also use Pleco or Pleco. So let's get started. Chinese has both, again, traditional and simplified and characters. I know that mainland China tends to use uh, simplified and then like Taiwan will use traditional characters. So if you're like me and you bought any volumes of the Tianwen Sufu um, volumes, the books, they are actually will be in traditional Chinese. Chinese is also a tonal language. There's five tones. So we've got first tone, second tone, third tone, fourth tone, and then fifth tone, which is like no tone. So it's not really five tones. I would say it's four tones plus not having one. Um, so, and then like the word can change based on that. So for example, we can take ma like horse, but depending on the tone, it will change. I mean, ma, first tone, but second tone, ma, like you're asking a question, it goes up. And then third tone, ma. Fourth tone, ma. And then fifth tone, ma. Um, you can't really hear the difference, I guess, between one and five, but it will become more apparent in a second, I guess. Tian guan zi fu. Um, so Tian means heaven. Guan is like government official. And then zi fu means blessing. So you've got heaven officials blessing. So that's kind of where that translation comes from. So let's move on to our main boy, Xilian. So I'm gonna write his simplified version first. And so that is his name. Um, the one that you see on Hua Chang's arm tattooed will be the traditional one I, on the bottom. Xie means thanks, so you can think xie xie. The end means like pitiful, to have pity, like pity on, to have mercy. Kind of makes sense. Um, also, this lian is part of ku lian, so that means pitiful. And then we've got his title, right? Tai zi dian xia. Honestly, I am memorizing them at this point. So Taizi means crown prince, and then Dian Xia is like your highness. So it's saying his royal highness, the crown prince. So he is also known as Go Go, right? So this is where we get back into, so Go is first tone, but Go is no tone. So that is kind of where you could see the difference, Go Go. So Go means older brother. A lot of Asian countries and Asian languages have where you um, have different different characters for each of the family members. So you've got older brother, Go Go. You've got D for younger brother, D D. I believe this is Jie Jie, older sister, and then Mei Mei for younger sister. So we can actually go into some of his other titles. So he's also known as Taizi Yue Shen, where this again is Crown Prince. Yue means to please, and then Shen is God, so God pleasing Crown Prince. So Xie Lian is also known as 
Kwa Kwan Wushan. I'm not 100% about the stroke order. I didn't want to, I didn't want to research every single one. And I know that's bad, but I'm also lazy. Do it with you, Lil Alsher. I know you raised me better than this. So flower, crown, martial, god. So that's also one of his titles. So let's move on to Hua Cheng next. So Hua means flower and Cheng means city. So his name, Hua Cheng, literally means city of flowers, which I thought was pretty cool. So he also goes by San Lang. So San Lang is also how wives can refer to their husbands as darling, kind of like Korean yobo or Japanese anata. Sanlang literally means third son and it also is pronounced saburo in Japanese and that's actually how you would write it. So in case you were interested. He also goes by his famous four character moniker. So his name literally means blood rain seeking flower which is where his crimson rain sought flower comes from, his title. So I think it's always fun to kind of go through and do this. And I really did it when I was reading Moldau's this year, so I'll probably film that and we can go through that together. So he's also known as Hong Honger, or is it Honger? It's kind of a cute way of saying like little red. This R is like a cutesy way, like something affectionate to add at the end of the name, kind of like chan or kum in Japanese. So I would say that it's more like an affectionate way of saying little red, like referring to the child's name. He's also known as, so spoiler, Wu Ming, literally translates to no name, which is quite literal. So <laughs> I think that's funny. I really like that. So next we've got one of my personal favorites, Mu Qing. And this move is kind of a hard character. And I don't, I've never learned it. So, oh no, it's really bad. I'm going to try that again. <laughs> it's still really bad. Let's try that again. One more time. I'm sorry, Mu Qing. I'm sorry, mom. <laughs> The Mu is really bad. So Mu means admire or to yearn for. Qing is like feeling, affection, love, passion. A lot of these very poetic things. I think it really um, matches his character. And he's also known as Fu Yao, right? Fu Yao. Um, and I don't know these characters at all, so I used apps. I saw one translation that was like a cyclone, another to take off, fell specifically upwards. Um, but I also saw another one that was to get a quick promotion. So specifically like in your career. And if we take that one step further, we could also see it as like social standing, possibly. Again, I don't really know, um, but I feel like that fits really well with, that fits really well with the story and how he was kind of poor and didn't really have anything and he was taking care of his mom. And then, you know, Xie Lian took him into the palace and he was his servant, but then he, you know, was able to practice the sword and then finally was able to ascend after all of those years. So I feel like that's a really fitting, another translation to look at. The number three of our Xingle trio, so Feng Xin. So Feng means wind and Xin means like belief, faith, trust. And I don't know, I almost think of this as like fleeting faith or fleeting trust, which, you know, kind of happens, you know, with him and his um, baby mama and his son. He just kind of leaves, but like he didn't know, but he left and they like reunite again, but it's a little, uh, and like also like Shailian, like he, he left, but you know, it's because he told him to, but I don't know, but maybe I'm just reading too much into it. So again, I'm doing more of a very literal translation. Because, so if you know something, 
let me know. Put it in the comments. I would love to know. Everything is a learning opportunity, right? So Nan means south and then Feng means wind again. So the southern wind. A spoiler, don't listen if you haven't read the books, but um, whenever Xie Lian was saying, oh yeah, I knew you guys were, you know, Nan Feng and Fu Yao, um, one of the reasons for why he knew Feng Xin was Feng Xin was Nam Feng was because he's like, oh well, you just took Feng, which is part of your name Feng Xin, and then Nan, which is um, he's the general of either the southeast or the southwest, right? Um, right, they're both generals, and he's like, yeah, you just like took two characters from your title and put them together, and that's how I knew, and I was like, that's that's really funny. <laughs> so we've got. Banyue, and her name literally means half moon, and she's also known as the Banyue Guo Shi. So it's literally half moon country teacher or master. This Shi, if you are familiar maybe with some other books, um, other novels, this is the Shi Zun, the Shi, so it's Shi Zun Shi. It means like teacher or master. The cat is hungry. So this gets translated to imperial preceptor. That's what she is, um, right? She's like leading the country with her magic, her snakes. And then we've got her boyfriend, Pei Xiu. Again, I need help. So Pei, I think is just a common um, last name. But I do know that kind of this is the clothing radical, so I think it's either kimono or kuromohen in Japanese. I looked at Pliko and is or a translation online and it says the look of a flowing gown. And I don't know if that's really Peiming-esque or Peixiu-esque. Um, so let me know if that Pei means anything or if it is just um, his last name. And then show. so typically this means like inn or lodge. So another translation of this is constellation. And I thought that was a little bit more fitting for our Xiao Pei. So Pei means mini me, so Xiao Pei. Next we've got He Xuan. He means to congratulate. Xuan means like black, dark, profound, also obscure. So kind of along those lines, which kind of makes sense for him, right? So then we get into his four character moniker. So that's He Shui Chen Zhou, like Hua Zheng's. His moniker also translates pretty literally, Blackwater Sinking Ships. So then we've got his boyfriend, girlfriend. I ship beef leaf all the way. So they share the same faith, they have the same name, so they share the same Xuan. So again, from before, Shi means teacher or master. So Qing is this really interesting character. It, it does mean blue-green, like kind of like almost aquamarine, but it means blue and it also means green. It's like typically associated with like vegetation so the translation there's also like a green like it can be translated as green grass this also means like green like you're young so it means like springtime or youth so there's a lot of translations and connotations that come along with qing and then shen is again black etc from above that we see up here and so i'm gonna do this one in traditional feng shi qing and so that is w Lord Windmaster. This is Simplified Wind. Simplified Shi, Feng Shi, Yang Yang. So that would be Lady Windmaster. So then we've got his brother, Shi Wu Du. So again, the Shi is teacher or master. And then Wu means like without. So it's the same. Wu as in Wei Wu Xian or Wu Ming. Do actually means to cross, like a river, um, to pass through. It's got the water radical, it's got a sunzi on there. Implied that it will have something to do with water, or it means to ferry. So literally his name is not being able to cross, not being able to pass through. So it kind of lends to his, if you don't make um, offerings to the water god, you're not going to have safe passage. 
So he's also referred to as Shui Hong Tian. So this is the characters for the water tyrant. So this literally means water, this means harsh, and this means heaven as we saw before. But I'm assuming that these put together is tyrant. And then finally, we've got the third of the three tumors, one of my personal favorites. When the wing is clear or sharp, the wen means literature. One of her titles is also the Yingwen Chen Chen. And then Chen Chen is, Chen is like true, truly. And then Chun is lord or gentleman, the true lord, the true gentleman. And I think that also has to do with her having a male form and people believing that, you know, she is smart. She is the civil, she's the number one civil god. So she must be a man, right? Um, wrong. So I think like that's kind of like the connotation, but I thought it was really funny that um, that's like one of her titles, one of her names. So one thing I forgot, so Shu Qingshan also has, he has another title, right? So he, we've got the four calamities, um, but we've also got the four, I forgot what they were called, the not calamities, the opposite, <laughs> I'm not sure. And he and Xilian are one of them. So Xilian, the god-pleasing crown prince, and um, Shu Qingxuan is the lord who poured the wine. So yeah, I forgot to include that. I had that in my notes over here, and then I completely forgot. So fun stuff, right? But yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you got something out of it. And I'm definitely still learning, and I'm definitely yeah still I'm doing a lot and I'm sorry that my handwriting <laughs> kind of sucks. Thanks for watching and thanks for thanks for being here. Um so yeah, bye bros. Thanks for watching.